Welcome back to the show, everyone. Of course, uh, most people are aware that sun causes skin damage, but there's a variety of kinds of skin damage. How do you manage it? How do you make sure your skin is healthiest through all the seasons, yes. especially now when someday we'll get summer? You see, point. when we booked our next guest, we thought on July 27th, oh, we'd <laughs> be in the hot. midst of heat and sun for some <laughs> summer skin tips, but no. It's cloudy, but yeah. Dr. Jason Rivers is joining us now. He is a dermatologist. How are you? Jason, nice I'm well, to see thanks. You. Good. So tell us what you do in your practice. Well, my practice is very varied. Um, I've been in it for a long time. I do general medical dermatology and also a lot of cosmetic dermatology as well. What's the difference? Well, medical dermatology will include things like acne, rosacea, skin cancer, and weird rashes and bumps. Awesome. awesome. I'd like that a doctor <laughs> describes them as weird rashes and bumps. Yeah, you know, your, your rash is my rush. Kind of thing. <laughs> uh, how common are things like, uh, because we're going to get into all kinds of things, but rosacea uh, you mentioned as well, and, and uh, I hear this a lot from a lot of people that, that right. this is something that they struggle with. It's a, sort of an under-talked about uh, disease, and rosacea affects about 2 million people in Canada. It's something that affects mainly women uh, between the ages of 25 and 50, but men can be involved as well. Usually fair-skinned people? Usually fair-skinned people, and it's characterized by people who have a tendency to get very red in the face, um, and this goes on and off for more than three months, and then becomes fairly persistent over time. And then you can get acne like pimples with it, and if you're really bad with time, you can get actually swelling of the skin like on the nose, like the W.C. Fields nose. Right. And this is different from people who blush. Rosacea well, people, well, people who blush can have rosacea, okay. but you don't necessarily have to have rosacea if you blush. So uh, how do you treat rosacea? What do, you, what do you actually do and what are some of the methods you can do to control it? Well, first of all, people who have rosacea, there's a lot of trigger factors that can make them worse. So uh, alcohol in some people, red wine. So switch to white wine if you want, which is perfect for the summer. And spicy right. foods. <laughs> spicy foods, exactly. Hot drinks. Um, stress is a big factor for a lot of people. So if you can reduce your exposure to those stress factors, um, that can help the disease. Then the second thing is that people who have rosacea are very sun sensitive, so a sunscreen is an important uh, aspect for the treatment. And then the third thing is that, as I just said, people have sensitive skin in general, right. and so you need to use a good uh, cleansing regimen, a mild moisturizer, because the normal barrier function of the skin is also destroyed mm -hmm. or disrupted at and least. You've brought some examples of, of products uh, that are far more sensitive for the skin and, and made specifically for yeah, people or, or I guess just anybody, right? I mean, yeah, you I have use a product that line that I've developed over the last uh, decade called Riversol and it incorporates a molecule that comes from the red cedar tree here in BC called Thuyaplacin. You can say that quickly. Bless you. <laughs> exactly. And um, it has anti-inflammatory and um, anti-fungal uh, effects and so it can soothe the skin to some degree as well. Well let's look at some pictures right now because uh, the first photo is a woman who obviously suffers from rosacea. We can see it on the left side of her face there mm -hmm. and a lot of times I guess uh, doctors will prescribe medications for this orally like uh, penicillin or antibiotics. That's right. If it's bad enough, if somebody's getting inflammatory lesions so it looks like acne with bumps and pus pimples then we'll use topical antibiotics in conjunction with oral antibiotics and usually tetracycline family is what we use. And people don't want to be taking that all the time and you right. discovered that your products can help soothe rosacea and we're going to look at this woman's photo only this three weeks later of using the skincare line that we have today and it's, it's substantially wow. reduced. Yeah, it's a lot better and this is sort of a, what we say is an anecdote. I mean it's not a scientific study yeah. But it does show that there's something going on here, and we're seeing enough people who are getting this kind of response that it's an interesting observation at the very least. Yeah. And well, and if we flip between the before and after, you can really get redness. a sense of, yeah. of the difference between uh, the two as well. Exactly. And for anybody who's suffered from rosacea, the thought of taking tetracycline or anything like that for long periods of time or even frequently at all is, is not what you want to be doing. So to use skincare that can help reduce it, the That's effects right. is, is very promising. Yeah, I mean, I think that it has to be taken in the context that it's not for everybody. It's not the cure. There's no cure yeah. for rosacea, but certainly it can help a lot of people. Uh, and sunscreen as well. I mean, it's something so that we have to use. Uh, so if you have rosacea, you really have to be aware of what kind of sunscreen. Exactly, and, well. and you have to be careful because for uh, people who have rosacea, especially they have sensitive skin, so they can't tolerate a a lot of different products on the skin people will say that you know I put anything on my skin and it starts to burn so even with sunscreen so 
so you have to try them, uh, but you do need to use a broad spectrum sunscreen, meaning that it covers both the UVA and UVB parts of the spectrum. And you can see that on the outside of the box. Yeah, they're labeled. You've got some 60s and 70. I have been. I've never seen Michael, 70. Michael, some people are really pale. No, I, no, I realize that. I, I, it's a brilliant... But I didn't, I didn't actually know that you could get 70. Well, it's going to probably change in the next while because the FDA in the United States and subsequently Health Canada, because they usually follow suit, will limit the, um, the labeling so that you could put 50 plus and you won't be able to go on because, you know, you right. get a it SPF a 1000, point. you know. Right, right. Yeah. right. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on and we're going to talk a little bit about acne. And as with rosacea, this can affect people psychologically mm -hmm. if they have it really badly. And we're looking at a woman here. Now, when somebody comes to you with severe acne like that, what, as a dermatologist, do you recommend? Well, first thing, as you pointed out, um, acne is probably the number one health concerns of teenagers and young adults, and it's a fallacy to think that, you know, I've got acne when I'm 16, and, you know, I'm going to turn 18, and that's the end of it, because about 25% of people start getting acne after they're 20. Oh, no, it's God's cool, yeah. cruel joke. You'll be getting zits until you're 70 <laughs> right. and still right. using Clarisol. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> uh, so, uh, obviously, God has a stake in one of these companies. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, so what do you do when somebody has it that badly though? Well you do need to use oral medication in that situation and uh, our top gun still remains to this day is a vitamin A derivative called Accutane and it's got a lot of bad press but if it's used properly it's a very very good drug and it gives you the best chance of going into long-term remission but even with Accutane and all the things we use for acne it can dry the skin and so again you need moisturizers and you need to use sun protection during the summer How months. How important is cleaning your skin properly when it comes to acne? It's important, but it's not critical. I mean, acne is not related to dirt. It's not because your skin's dirty that you get acne. Yeah. There are genetic factors. There's um, an increased production of oil that happens naturally. Acne bacteria is an issue. And then the opening to the hair follicle is plugged up. And so you need to use things that will open up the pores, will allow to re reduce the oil and then sometimes reduce the acne. So bacteria. that once again means that the products that you're choosing to put on your face, you have to be very discerning in terms of what right, you're using. because they can your... really fry exactly. your skin. Does yeah. diet affect acne or is that a myth? No, it's true. It's true? Yeah, yeah. diet can. I mean, it's been a long time people have said yes, no, yes, no, but recent research has suggested that in fact diet can play a role. Uh, and it can be individual too. For um, some people it can be peanuts, some people it can be milk products. The most um, and uh, worst case scenario, chocolate. <laughs> oh wow! Worst case scenario. <laughs> That's horrible. Yeah. One uh, last photo that we wanted to look at because you know it does get hot sometimes. Yeah, if you've been traveling in the eastern United States heat or rash. Canada or perhaps in the Midwest, you may have heat rash. So we thought we'd throw this in there. But uh, what is heat rash? Is it just a skin's reaction to? Well, there are different types of heat-related rashes. The picture we showed is actually a thing called polymorphic light eruption. These yeah. fancy names, meaning that you get itchy red bumps that occur on the skin. And this is after sun exposure, occurs a few hours after you're in the sun oh. to up to about a day, and then it settles within about a day or so after you're out of the sun. Uh, more common in women. What, what should you do when you get heat rash? Because people panic and they start putting all sorts of creams on their skin and they might be making it worse, but well, what should you do if you get heat get rash? Well, basically, get, get out of the sun. Yeah, um, a. step a. one. <laughs> you can use antihistamines. You can use a mild topical steroid like a hydrocortisone preparation. And um, a sunscreen is also a good preventative thing, but the key thing is to use a proper sunscreen because some of these sunscreens don't block enough of the ultraviolet A light and they can actually make things worse. Make sure you're using the See, right See, the product. sun is evil and we're That's lucky we my, don't have it. My takeaway from this is make sure you're using the right product. Copper tone 5, that's not working out for you. That baby oil action yeah, you got going on, it's not working. Olive sure. oil, not working Thank for you me. so much. Thanks, and, Doctor. Uh, you can find Dr. Rivers products everywhere. You can go to the website to find out more information. Yeah, VancouverSkin.com for more info. Thank you so much for my taking pleasure. the time. My pleasure. Thanks Thank for you. having me. That was great. We're going to take a break.